Okay, this is part three. Don't have too many games to go, so let's finish this quickly. Uh, new Super Mario Brothers. I'm sure everyone's played this by now. Um, it's pretty much the return of 2D Mario. It's hard to believe now since they, you know, there's another new Super Mario Brothers, but this is the first new uh, quote unquote canon 2D Mario game since Super Mario World. Which came out in like 1990 in Japan, so that was what 15 years in between. Guess I guess maybe you should count like the Super Mario Land games or something like that. Then maybe, but anyway, that's not really important. But this is a solid game. I I don't think this is anywhere near as good as the Wii version. Um, I like the power ups. I felt were really lame. Except for, like, the giant one, which you can see on the cover. Um, like, there's a there's a quote-unquote power-up that makes you really small. Which, like, it's, it's, it's so, like, contextual. Like, you'd only need it to, fill, to fit into small holes. Like, why would you ever uh, use that one otherwise? And there's, like, this one where, like, you turn into a Koopa. Like, you put the shell on your back and, like, you can roll and stuff. Like... I don't know, that's not very useful in my opinion, but anyway, um, yeah, just the levels aren't as well designed. It actually is a really good game, like, don't get me wrong, but I definitely get the Wii version over this one. Um, you've probably already played this game, though. I think it sold over 20 million copies. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, I guess when you... When people think of the DS, they think of first Mario Kart DS and then New Super Mario Brothers. Like this, those two games continue to sell long after they came out. So, uh, you should if you haven't already, you should check out the New Super Mario Brothers commercial. Which it's a really good one. Kind of starts out uh, with the NES Mario, and then it it transforms into this one. It's a really cool transition and. It's a really great commercial, as far as those go. I, I don't like commercials in general. I think they're lame, but... Uh, yeah. And another Mario game. Super Mario 64 DS. This is like this is a launch title. Or, sorry, I shouldn't say title. I think that's a really lame marketing term. I'll say launch game, but... Um, yeah, this is pretty much faithful to... The N64 version, you use a D-pad instead of, um, obviously the N64 control stick, which I guess takes a little while to get used to, but people complain about that, but I didn't have too much trouble. I got all the stars. Um, they added 30 more stars to this game, so it's a total of 150. And you can play as three additional characters, as you can see on the box, um, Luigi, Yoshi, and Wario, and I believe the working title for this game was Super Mario 64 times 4, so I guess that explains the four character dynamic. And, um, yeah, I don't have too much to say, um, about this game. I mean, everyone's played Mario 64 at this point. And the mini games in this game are actually really cool. Uh,. I don't know. I I I I don't think the additions they made to this game were that special in terms of uh the playable characters like Luigi could run on water. Uh Yoshi could eat stuff. Wario was I I don't remember exactly what Wario did, but probably like strength or something. So, yeah, um uh, recommended obviously if you haven't played Mario 64, but I don't know. Maybe I'd recommend the Virtual Console one instead. I don't really I have a preference either way. And next stuff I'll review together. Uh, I have here four Phoenix Wright games. The original Phoenix Wright. Uh, Justice for All. Sorry, the light. The lighting is really getting in the way in this video. Um, uh, f f uh, Justice for All which is the second one. Um, Apollo Justice. Uh... As you can see, I don't have the Phoenix Wright 3, which Trials and Tribulations, I believe, is called. This one's starring a new character, Apollo Justice, and Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Ed Edgeworth. Edgeworth is the um, the prosecutor in the series. Um, 
quote unquote the bad guy. Um, I'm not going to get into spoilers, so I'll, I'll just say he's a bad guy. I think you can tell where I'm going with this, but anyway, this is pretty much like a graphic adventure series. Um, has a lot of text, so if you're illiterate or dumb or whatever, you might not want this series. But the writing, the the writing, and especially the localization is really cool. I I like a lot of puns in Japan. They translate it over to America seamlessly. Like they work in t- context to American taste, so that's really cool. It's really over the top in terms of um, when you're in the courtroom and stuff. That's really it's really funny. The animations are kind of old fashioned. The, the the first three games are actually Game Boy Advance games, and they were ported to the DS for, for America. And I believe the first one is also on iPhone. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say iPhone. iOS or whatever. Whatever bullshit they call it. But, um... Yeah, these are really good games. Um, I, I want to get Phoenix Wright, Trials and Tribulation. These are actually pretty expensive games. Um, in relation to most DS games, probably 20 for 30 bucks uh, each. So, still highly recommended. Uh, this is Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. And I guess I've fallen out of love with this series. Um, it, I, it really peaked with Vice City. I think that's a great game. Still is. Will always be amazing. Or maybe it's the fact that Vice City was actually the only great game in the series. And the rest are just like pretenders. I don't know. But this is a pretty much a, a basic GTA game. Um, actually pretty impressive for a DS game. It's also on the PSP and iOS. I think it's better on the PSP actually, but it came out on the DS first, so that's why I have it um, for this one. But I don't know. You do whatever you usually usually do in a GTA game, um, except for there's this one mechanic. It's like uh, like drug selling or drug dealing. Sorry, um, where you buy a supply and then you sell it to other people when they when they're having like a party or something and they need like cocaine or whatever. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess I like that kind of like buy low, sell high mechanic in some games. Kind of like a lemonade standish uh, sort of ordeal. Uh, I think there's a game called Drug Wars. Um, I used to play that on my... Uh, well, I, I never had it, but my friend had it on his uh, TI-83 plus calculator. That was kind of fun, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'd probably get this for PSP instead if I had the choice now. And uh, finally, I don't have the box for it with me, but here's Nano Stray. It's a shoot 'em up. I refuse to use the term shmup. It's a lame phrase. Don't ever use it. But um, yeah, it's pretty basic when it comes uh, in the shoot 'em up regard. There are a ton of shoot 'em ups, so I mean, this is pretty fun. I guess it's one of the best on the DS, which isn't saying a whole lot, but. I don't know. I'd rather play other games. Like, I'm really excited for uh, Radiant Silver Gun, which is coming to XBLA uh, this year, actually, and this spring. And when I think of hardcore gaming, I think of Radiant Silver Gun for some reason. It's it's uh, one of those games where um, you kind of have to get better. It's not like a hand-holdy, quote-unquote, experience game like Dead Space where it holds your hand and stuff. Sorry, I'm just repeating myself, but um but yeah, you kind of have to master the game to beat the bosses and stuff like that. It's I I can always appreciate games where you know you're going to die a lot at first, but as you progress, you get better, you master the levels, you feel you, there's a lot of satisfaction involved. Like if if you're a fan of those kind of games, I definitely recommend Super Meat Boy too. I don't know why I'm talking about this in a DS review, but uh, yeah, I definitely get uh, Super Meat Boy. That was probably my favorite game of uh, 2010. Fuck you, I'm not saying 2010, but um, uh, yeah, that's all I can say about Nano Stray. And uh, I want to talk about one other game I have. I don't know where it is right now. It's kind of annoying to talk about your collection if you don't actually show it, but I'll talk about. Uh, Mega Man Zero Collection came out in, uh, last year, and basically it's, well not basically, it is a collection of the four Mega Man Zero games on the GBA, and I I like, I like 
uh, like Mega Man X games, but for some reason the Zero games just never resonated with me. Like, I don't like having overworlds in uh, basic uh, side-scroller games. By overworld, I don't mean like simple stuff like in Super Meat Boy or Mario World or whatever. Those are really easy to navigate and you just go from level to level, but... In Mega Man Zero, there's some other stuff you need to do. I mean, it's not that much, but it's, it is enough to be a barrier to me. I just want to play the levels, to be honest with you. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I also don't like the Game Boy Advance controls. Like you press R to dash, which I'm not used to. I'm a huge Mega Man X guy, and that's just not what I do. I, had, I actually have to play it on the GameCube when I had the Game Boy Advance games. I had to play it on the Game Boy Player since the GameCube controller is more comfortable to me than a GBA SP. And, um, there, there's one other point I wanted to say about it that I think I forgot, but, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I'll say, just so I don't, there's not, like, two minutes of silence while I think about it, but, yeah, that's my collection. As I said, my favorite game is WarioWare Touched. Uh, there isn't too much for the DS coming out anymore, uh, as the 3DS looms over it, but... There are some good stuff coming out like Okami Den, Ghost Trick, Pokemon, Dragon Quest VI, um, possibly Nino Kuni, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's my DS collection. I'll probably do my PSP collection soon, maybe within a couple days, maybe a couple hours, I don't know. But yeah, look out for some other stuff. I'll uh, definitely have some good stuff coming in the near future. Thanks for watching.